enter entertain a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Approved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Second item. Uh, well, I guess first, Sarah, I'd ask if there's anything you want to be sure we cover. I think we'll get everything done, but you okay with the agenda as it is? Yep, good to go. Okay. First uh, item on the agenda is reviewing the 2019 Vine Street Improvement Project Plan. Mike and Rose. Yeah. All right, so Public Works Committee, tonight I want to just review, uh, point out some things on the proposed Vine Street construction plans and get your feedback uh, on, a, on a couple of things here. Um, so we received these uh, last week from Bolton and Mank. These are preliminary plans as part of the Vine Street Reconstruct, which is going to be from 9th Street to Wisconsin Street. Um, the, what you're looking at the TV right now is the intersection of Wisconsin and Vine. Um, to the north is the entrance to the high school. Okay. Um, so per some recommendations from our traffic engineer, and to alleviate some of the congestion at this intersection, what we're proposing is to expand, what do you wanna say, add some, some turning lanes at this intersection, um, and we're going to, oh, that's gonna be a problem, I'm sorry. Um, so, <coughs> oh, I should've, Grab my laser. So let's just go to the, let's go to the right. Let's go to the right, kind of the the east side of this intersection. So right now, what's proposed is the median is kind of right in the middle of the road, and what you're looking at now is actually moving the median to the south, which would allow us to incorporate a through lane to the west. So you'd have a right hand turn lane into the high school. You'd have a left hand turn lane going south on Wisconsin and people would be able to go straight through, okay? On the south side of this intersection, currently where the straight through lane is proposed, we have a bike lane, okay? So coming up Wisconsin, on both the east and west side, there's a designated bike lane, and the people that are going north on Wisconsin that come to this intersection, they're directed to go kind of right where that through arrow is right now, okay? And we can't, the engineers can't fit that in if we go to this three lane system. So what kind of two options we have is, is we can try to divert to the south of this, there's the St. Pat's uh, Church parking lot. And then on the west side of Wisconsin, there's kind of just a apron going to a driveway to nowhere. We can terminate the bike lane at that point and direct them onto the sidewalks coming north to this intersection. And if they're going south, they'd start out on the sidewalk. And then when we get that, that apron, we would divert them back onto Wisconsin onto the current bike lane. So we could do that and we would be able to keep this as proposed or, or we, we don't put this straight through lane in and we do basically a left-hand turn and then we do a straight and a right. Okay. I'm following. Mm -hmm. You're following? Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing too is we could just leave the bike, you know, the the hard the hardcore bikers are probably just gonna stay on the road regardless of what we do. And the problems that we face are, you know, from that seven thirty to eight fifteen window, and then again at that, <clears throat> you know. 2.45 to 3.30 window. The rest of the day, there's really not a lot of bike conflict, car conflict, just because the intersection isn't as crowded. But during those times of the day, you know, we're trying to, you know, direct traffic and, and create more storage areas. So I just want to get a general consensus. I know <coughs> some of you may have some history with when they did Wisconsin, adding that bike lane to that. Jim, do you have any history with that by any chance? Just that it was a uh, because of the design or the it's a complete street. <coughs> yep. So I think that required. Okay. It was a trans five five oh four. If we checked on that because it's a complete streets design, it has to have that. Okay. And I'm not I'm not real in favor of diverting up on the sidewalk. For one thing, that sidewalk is in it's the winter time wide. is never cleared. Yeah, and it's not very wide to begin yeah. with. Yeah, it's is and it, you're, you're going to conflict with the pedestrians. Right. You do that. 
Right. So it's, and there are probably more pedestrians than bicycles. Right. So, um, okay. I'm thinking that might be a little narrow for the three mm -hmm. lanes going in there. Um, and it might, it might confuse um, some of the high school drivers. Not that they're bad drivers, but yeah. it might be more confusing to have the three there than just the two, like the straight or right hand. Okay. Um, hmm. So the, the, the engineer, traffic engineer, designed this intersection, or redesigned it based upon, you know, uh, trying to alleviate some of the bike and ped uh, vehicle conflicts, but then also to um, possibly incorporate a stop, a traffic signal at this intersection in the future. Mm -hmm. And he said that this would be the most uh, beneficial or the, the, the best practice in the, in the industry to do this at this intersection if we do add traffic lights. So mm -hmm. if we do end up adding traffic lights, this is what we're going to want to have at this intersection. Because right now, let's just say, you know, you're heading, you're heading northbound on Wisconsin, you come to the stop sign, and say we have a left-hand turn, and then we just have a straight and a right. Well, people that are going to want to go straight, they have to wait for mm -hmm. traffic to clear in the, park, in the high school parking lot. Well, then that backs up the traffic that wants to go right right away, you mm -hmm. know, where, where mm -hmm. if you have this design, you, clear, you can clear that traffic that wants to go either east or so west to, right all, away. Right. Yeah. I, I guess I, um, I hear what you're saying about not wanting to use the sidewalk, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I like the idea of keeping those, the traffic turning, the, especially the right-hand turns. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not uncommon to have a, a, a conflict in a, in a right-turn lane. We just drove through Minneapolis, mm -hmm. and it's just everywhere, every mm -hmm. intersection. Sure. A, where they have bike lanes and they have a lot more than we do right. there's there's always a conflict we have to look at how we mark them and sign it so that. there's let me back up to the very beginning yeah. so there are bike lanes going both directions yep so you know and i lived uh in madison and live you know basically with a bike can you can you scroll down yep no I, no I mean oh i'm sorry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> left and right yeah, up right. and down um so like the bike lanes were always just to the left of the right turn only lanes. Right. Is that something that was considered? You know, um, it, it got diverted, or the bikes got, the paint on the road got, you know. Yep. Oh, I see your point. We, with 16 feet on that right hand turn lane there, we may be able to push over the right hand turn only striping and kind of keep what's currently up there because what's currently up there is like I said that that bike lane comes up on the, the east side of the road and then it kind of just it the bike lane <laughs> the painting kind of just disappears and it, it reappears another 30 feet and it's kind of right in the middle of the intersection <coughs> yeah, no. we need to really look at I, but I, I think you're on to something yeah is that either either put the bike lane right down the middle of that turn lane or put it to the to the left-hand side of it, so they're they're just parallel to the people going straight. Yeah, and yep. they're not c cutting across. I like that. Yeah. Okay, I'll say I'll make you can that. Just ask them. I'll make that suggestion. Possible. Yeah, let's. Let, but I think we want to try and keep this design in mind for the future use of that you know that intersection, mm -hmm. but try to accommodate the bike the bikers at that at that same location. Yeah, how far back does that? Would you have to do that? Okay. I, I guess when I was bicycling on them, I never really paid attention. It just came naturally, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sure they have experience with that. Yeah. The engineers. Yeah, but I'll, I'll definitely, I think that's a good, uh, good compromise there. So then on what do you do about the... The other bikes. The one on the, the west that hand, way. Yeah, the one that are going southbound. You just keep them on the, the road like we have now. Well, that road's a little narrow, though, isn't it? Is it? There's just one going south. Yep, there's just one going south. There's just south. one lane. Yep. So it's 14 feet, though, it looks like. Right. Yeah, that's plenty wide. So we can kind of keep our current yeah. system on that side. We probably could. Okay. All right. 
Let's do that. Um, so yeah, like I said, that median on the, the east intersection, we're, we're going to be ripping that out and moving it south to incorporate those three lanes, you know, the through, the right, and the left. Um, the left median, we're going to be uh, doing some curb replacement and, and including kind of a taper to funnel people to the, you know, to the north of that. Basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to make as much collection areas as we can to hold cars. Yeah. Um, that are that are going to want to turn into the high school. Um, I, th I, I think a, a, a clear definition of that westbound right-hand turn into the high school. Mm -hmm. So that, so I and I'd actually use paint. I'd start that Way another back. hundred yards up the road. Yeah, because that that's, that gets really squirrely. Right. At, at seven thirty in the morning, coming through there, I said, "What are these people doing?" Right. You know, <laughs> they're passing in, in on the other side, and it just it's just really nuts. Yeah. But that would that would help that. Yeah, it would. And, you, I, and I like having that. I <coughs> drive through there and said, "Man, we got we got sixteen, eighteen feet here." I know. It says and just for one car going straight ahead, you know, it's a, it's a, obviously a waste of space. Yeah. So this is good. Yeah. I was going to say, is this something? Um, like, has Dr. Olette from the, you know, superintendent of the schools looked at this at all, or has the school looked at it? I haven't approached him yet. But is this I, something that, I mean... Just too early to approach him, or is that usually part of the process? Well, I think after your comments tonight, I would probably set up a meeting with him okay. to, to discuss kind of the changes at that intersection. Okay. Um, just to keep him informed, if anything else. Yeah. Um, and just let them know that we're trying to accommodate some of the traffic congestion and impedance. You know, the main reason that we're doing these changes to the intersection is to reduce the vehicle pedestrian conflicts, yep. you know, because right now it's kind of a game of chicken, you know, with the four way stop. Mm. Um, you know, is it, you know, you're supposed to yield to pedest pedestrians, but, you know, at certain parts of the day, I mean, you'd have traffic sitting there for 10 straight minutes, you know, with the, the students crossing there. So to put the signals in there, um, you know, it will, it would put the walk sign, you know, they would walk for, you know, 30 seconds, clear out, then the trap could go, you know, to try to alleviate some of that congestion okay. and possible conflict. So, um, How about on the, uh, on the south of that, west of that intersection mm -hmm. where they, you get a backup in the mornings where they're turning into the second entrance to the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. So that's this intersection right here. Um, Decline. <laughs> I'm in a meeting, Kevin. Um, so this is this is that Wisconsin intersection, and then if you go further to the west, this is the the access point into that western parking lot, mm -hmm. and you know we'll put a crosswalk in there. But we also want to try and put kind of as much collection area as well, making that left-hand turn into that parking lot. You know, so people would be able to stack in the left-hand turn while still leaving that straight-through access open. Mm -hmm. I, I would, I'd ask a, a question as to whether we need that crosswalk. Okay. At that point, mm -hmm. right, push them all up to the. It does it just reduce the the mound? Or can we push them all up to the mm -hmm. to the Wisconsin? We're going to cross there, even if we push it up. Yeah. There's so many people parked down by that park on. That's. Down Vine the Street, road. Vine Street Square. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Along the street. That's down about six or eight cars now. It, was, it used to last year it was 25. I mean, I go by every time I go by, I count how many cars are parked down there. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's it's looks almost reasonable now. But but they walk but they walk up. Maybe the, there's other kids who are walking from downtown too, just walking all the ways. Yeah, through. but but there's they've got a crosswalk earlier, or they can go up to. You know, what, yeah, so I guess I don't know the traffic pattern once you get inside the pedestrian pattern. So this is a crosswalk here. Um, so you can kind of see the right side is that, you know, left hand turn straight. So if you go further to the west, kind of down, I'm sorry, <laughs> down around the corner, there's 12th Street. So we have a, a crosswalk at 12th Street. Um, that coincides with our with our trail that goes to, to Coons Hill Park. Mm. So, you know, we do have a crosswalk further to the west. So, so that you're moving that up then, because I believe the crosswalk now is on the 
uh, right east side of, it is. Uh, yep. of 12th Street. Yep. You're moving I want to be straight across from the bike trail. I, I like that. Yep. I think that, that makes a lot of sense. So, I mean, we can keep it right. There's curb cutouts for this crosswalk as it currently sits up there. So we can keep it or we can we can remove them and try to push the pedestrian traffic up to the intersection. I guess that's, and I can ask, you know, SEH to, if they have any recommendations as well, see what they think. What I, think I, I think you're right, sir. I think the kids would cross there regardless, even yeah, if they're we gonna took cross it anyway. off. What I was wondering, and I'm, I may have just not been tuning in, but mm -hmm. when they, they're turning into the, the second entrance to the parking lot, mm -hmm. um, what it does is it blocks the people going straight through. There's no, there's, there's not marked. In fact, you have, you have to cross yellow lines to get past those people. To get around. And you're them. just passing, you're just crossing yellow lines. So right. Why are they, and they're, and they're wide, it's a big space. So right. I'm saying, well, can we look at that and see about creating a, 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 a straight through lane there. Mm -hmm. I think that would, that would definitely help the traffic in the mornings. Okay. All right. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to discuss was moving that crosswalk to the west side of 12th Street. Because right, like Jim said, currently it sits on the east side, but to be more in line with the, the trail access, um, moving it to that west side intersection. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of it is fairly straightforward. Um, you know, we're going to be matching what was done back in 2016 on Vine Street as far as kind of the, the parking on the north side of Vine Street as it currently stands right now. So just kind of mirroring that all the way up to, you know, 12th Street. We, uh, we can't park between 11th and 12th Street right now. No. And mostly from the just almost down to on the east side of 12th Street, most of that's no parking. Right. Just right at the, because yep. we just changed that recently. To with with kind of the hills and the way it comes around the corner, yeah, we don't want to, we really have a hard enough time think, with vision. Think about that whole thing being no parking all the way down to 11th Street, instead of all of a sudden you can park three cars and then oh, yeah. no, you're back to no parking again. Right. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. From a flow standpoint right right i don't know what how what the impact on the neighbors is going to be yeah and then at this at this crosswalk into our trail what i'm suggesting is putting in um user activated uh crosswalks where you know a person touches a button and it lights up to let people know especially coming down that hill around the corner we want to give people as much of a you know something to, to alert them to a person using that crosswalk yep. mm -hmm. so yeah. okay yeah, there were about 15 kids sliding down that hill. Yeah, nice. Came, just came down there. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Um, so I will, you know, based upon our discussions tonight, I'll ask about that that bike lane. Um, uh, trying to keep it on that west side, right hand turn lane. Um, and then, do you want me to to ask about that crosswalk at the high school parking lot, eliminating that? See if you know. I don't know the, the traffic pattern. I, I, okay. I, I can do that. I don't. I try not to go through there at that time. Of I would, day, so <laughs> that might be a good question for um, Dr. Olette too, just to okay. see, because he might have a sense of how, yeah. how the, okay. what happened yeah. after school, yeah. or the principal down there too, whoever. Okay. Where, where they? Where do they want the pedestrians right. coming through? Yeah. yeah. Right now, they've they've had a, a year of it, so they know <laughs> they know the mistakes that have yeah. been made around them. So then the next steps, um, you know, we'll, I'll be in contact with our engineers. Any recommendations or changes will happen over the next couple of weeks. I'll bring this to council on the 25th for uh, final approval and then go out for bids, um, you know, recommend going out for bids for the project. So that's kind of the timeline. Okay. So, okay. We're good. Okay. Do we have a start date on that? You're guessing? Um, I'm sure. <laughs> that one will be. We'll have to talk to the contractor because we want we want to work with the school as much as possible and not create any headaches up at that intersection. Um, so we may do some work, kind of to the west towards Ninth Street at the beginning of the project, and then once school is let out, then we'll start moving up that way. But 
I'm sure um, from what I've talked to Bolton and Mank, they want to start, you know, late April, early May on the project. But you also don't want to mess up the school yeah, schedule. Yeah. It's, it's either you, you, uh, you, uh, don't make you have conflicts worse. in the spring, you know, or you start late and you have conflicts in the fall, you know, so it's kind of pick your poison. Mm -hmm. So we'll try and work as best we can with them because it's going to, it's a tough intersection to begin with. And then to have construction at it, you know, we'll try and do that construction at that intersection when school is out of session, right. of course. So. Yep. I like the, some good ideas there. Positive improvement. Mm -hmm. Okay, next item, uh, discussion and recommendation on pond construction, pond, on post construction pond management. We missed Highway 35. Highway 35. Highway 35. Yeah. Sidewalk replacements. Not on my agenda. Oh. I didn't have it on my electronic one either, but it's in the paper here. Right? Can you get it up? You can't it's get not it up. It's not on the not on the electronic agenda that's out there. <laughs> I got it just when I just was at my office. <laughs> I think there's two versions maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell me what's next. That's All right. <laughs> 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 I did need a paper copy. <laughs> okay. Uh, discussion, possible action on the Highway 35 sidewalk replacements. So this is in conjunction with the 2021 Highway 35 reconstruct. The state is putting together plans already for that um, construction. And one of the questions that have come up in some of their recent meetings with um, SEH is kind of doing some design work for the utility department is sidewalk replacement and right now per the utility department is going to be replacing water and utility laterals as part of the project new services to the homes uh, from Vine Street to the north okay so just from Vine Street to the north is where they're going to be doing a bunch of utility work. So they're going to be repairing and replacing about 25% of the sidewalks on their dime just because when they're ripping up the sidewalks, the utility department will put in the new water laterals, mm -hmm. so on and so forth, and they'll put the sidewalk back. So they've discussed or they've, they want our opinion on what should we do with the other 75% of sidewalks. Do we want to leave them as they are? Do we want to take this opportunity to replace those sidewalks? Um, you know, using the scope of work, um, get a better rate. There's some plus and minuses to doing that. And some, of the, and I put it in your packet. So some of the pros are you eliminate some of that patchwork design because right now, you know, it's about every. Every so often you'll have, you know, old chunk, new chunk, old chunk, new chunk, old chunk, new chunk. So you get that aesthetics look. You also have more, you're more apt to have some settling of the sidewalk panels or, you know, lips that occur just because it's not one, when they come in and pour a new sidewalk, of course, it's all one continuous uh, sidewalk and you have that, you don't have that, those joint issues. Um, so those are, that's a con. Um, one of the pros, the other pro is the continuous sidewalk, um, replacing sidewalk now, um, you get that scope of work, you get that better pricing because they're going to be in here doing a bunch of concrete work anyways. Um, so the cons, according to Dave Schofield, who's been doing some of the design work for the utility department, a lot of the sidewalks have useful life left on them. Um, there's a few areas that are in disrepair due to some tree root issues or just some general sidewalk cracking that you'll have over time that we could, that we will repair a part of the project, but a majority of the sidewalks are actually in pretty good shape. Um, the cost is gonna be um, expensive. So they estimated that uh, to do that other 75% of the sidewalks is about $218,000. So just to put that in perspective, in our yearly CIP plan, we have $75,000 available for sidewalk repair and replacement. So it would basically wipe out you know, a couple of years of that money going towards this project and not doing any other sidewalk or curb repair throughout the town. And this was just on the north side of 2nd Street or Highway 35? It'd be on the, it'd be, it'd be on the east and west side of Highway 35. Uh, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, both, both sides. sides. Both sides. 
Yep. Okay. So how many, and, and how how many blocks? Yeah, how many? What? what? Uh, so you go from, uh, like I said, Vine Street all the way up to Division is okay. four, four or five blocks. Four or five long blocks. Yeah, right. four or five long blocks. Um, you know, of this two hundred eighteen thousand dollars that has been estimated, you know, per our sidewalk assessment policy, we can assess the property owners fifty percent of the cost to replace sidewalks that are currently installed so you know if we were to go ahead with that assessment policy that 218 goes down to 109 approximately um, which is a little more palatable um, and we could always you know that CIP plan is, is set in 2019 and 2020 we could always bump it up in 2021 to help accrue or help cover the expenses of part of this project if we want to go this route. Um, so I guess after all that being said, what I'm suggesting is I think we go ahead and have them plan for and design doing all the, the sidewalk repair work as an alternate bid and see what the numbers come back at. And maybe we might get a really good fair price on replacing all the sidewalk. And if you know, and then we can take a look at it and we can say yes or no at that time. Or let's say the bids come in super high, we can always just replace the, the panels that are cracked and just leave it at that. So I guess I'm open to, to anything. First, one thought would be uh, to look at the sidewalk audit okay. that was uh, done. And Tiffany should have yep. all the detail on that and see if there's you know, what, what recommendations came out of that. that that would uh, stretch well, we at least the rationale, you know, the rationale why you're replacing it. Mm -hmm. well, it can we make it safer? Uh, can we make it, it sh should it be wider? Yeah. Some of our sidewalks are pretty narrow. Right. And I, and I have no sense, you, you probably know better than, than I do, about, about the width of the sidewalks along, along 35 there. So I think they're all, pr they're all decent in width. What's that? It's supposed to be five feet wide, standard. Yeah. 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 But I, without going out, we've measure, got some four-foot sidewalks. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so we do. I don't. I just don't know. Yeah. But and any, anything else? Uh, right. We're so you're saying look at that sidewalk replacement plan to justify maybe moving ahead with some of these replacements because right. they they need to be done regardless of the project or not. Yeah. yeah. Well, I see as a, one of the upsides that maybe you didn't put down is you know that is our main drag and. That's we should be proud of the main drag, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and it being, you know, yeah. consistent, and not having that patchwork, right. it is a issue. But yeah. I guess on the other side, I really hate to see us skipping the seventy-five thousand a year for the rest of the city. Yeah. You know, that's that's a tough pill to swallow. Right. I, so I would try to incorporate it into the bid, and as for the whole project, as opposed to. Yeah, you know what's that's another. We're going to have a significant investment in that anyway. Yeah, that's another possibility too. Is we are going to appropriate money in the CIP for that improvement. Um, I believe it's uh, we put in, oh boy, what's I'm going to say five hundred or six hundred thousand for the new lighting, some of the new um, bump outs, so on and so forth through downtown. Um, we could try to incorporate that expense into those monies that have already been kind of designated for that project. Um, we could certainly do that. Um, we could always, you could always put more money into that fund in 2021, you know. So there are options. I think, I think the best thing, like I, like I said, would be to be part of the bid process as an mm -hmm. alternate and see what type, mm -hmm. type of price. Absolutely. You know. I would agree. That's, at, a, that's the, the first step. Least, yeah, at the very least, let's do that. Get a solid that. price on it, and then we can make a determination. Yeah, I think yeah. the union bid is a great idea. Yeah. Um, I'd be a little hesitant to replace sidewalk that's in really good shape, it sounds like. So yeah. when we have other sidewalk that maybe isn't in good shape. Yeah. But, but I think it never hurts to get a bid and look at it. Yeah. So. yeah. Is, is that any of that on any of the walking paths? Like, you know, as a destination, the Octagon House is that part of the? Is there? Like is it signed as a walking path, or do we have a dotted line on the on a map somewhere that says maybe we should look at that yeah. as part of this? It's just, you know, that's a, we could on the walking tour. Additional maybe? rationale for why you want to have your if it's going to be a walking path, it ought to 
we ought to be something we're, we're proud of and not right. where you're stubbing your toes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the panel heaving up, <laughs> that is problems, that causes problems. Right. Not only for people who are hiking, but handicap as well. And then you've got that affordable housing there. And, oh, yeah. You know, that's something to that's consider that. too. Yeah. Okay. I think what I'm hearing is I'll, I'll, I'll contact Dave Schofield and I'll say that, you know, Public Works Committee recommended um, putting it in as an alternate bid as part of the project and just see what kind of numbers that we get back mm -hmm. okay, at the very least. And then we'll make right. a determination how we want to move forward after we get those numbers. Start thinking, you know, yep. looking at, we should probably walk that. Yeah, thing. walk why, that why would we want it, Why would we want this to be better? Yeah. Because yeah. you got a stone wall uh, halfway up it, and you can't ride a bicycle down mm -hmm. that right. you know, a five foot sidewalk. Very difficult to, right. mm -hmm. with, a, with a barrier like that. Yep. Okay. Scary. All right. Sounds good. Nice. Next item post discussion recommendation on post construction pond management. Yeah, so for you tonight, we, we started some pond maintenance work on pond number, mm -hmm. pond number five, which is uh, west of Hagen Street, uh, kind of across from the post office to the west. I don't know if I included a map in here or not. I don't know. Um, you know, per our, per our MS4 permits that we have now, um, we're required to clear any woody vegetation around inlets, outlets, along stormwater, pond embankments, so on and so forth. Um, so we hired a company to come in and start cleaning that pond out. And, you know, prior to us doing that, we sent out a letter, which I included in your packet, to all the adjacent property owners and um, because some of the buildings there are leased units, the tenants weren't informed, mm -hmm. and they they were questioning what was going on, of course, um, which is natural. And you know, I had to explain to them, you know, why we're doing it, so on and so forth. And I just want to make you aware of you know some of the problems that we're in, running into, and ask for any recommendations that you would have, because you know the letter is is good. But, you know, I contacted some other communities and I contacted the DNR, uh, local DNR branch, and they sent me this kind of stormwater pond flyer mm -hmm. that they've had other communities include mm -hmm. in with their letters just to kind of re reinform or, you know, pictures are, are sometimes more helpful than words. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think moving forward, what I'm going to do is, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep sending out the letter to you know, adjacent property owners of the ponds, but I'm also going to include this, you know, pamphlet, this handout that the DNR gave to me, um, just to kind of reinforce why we're having to do it and so on and so forth. So um, I think that's a good strategy moving forward. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's worthwhile putting something in the paper or not, or like a, or like a newsletter that could be available. Because ultimately what I want to do is uh, create a, 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 a page on our website strictly for stormwater management and we can have all of our stormwater plan, our SWIPs, our modeling, you know, the, the handouts, the, you know, why we're rationale so people have that information at their fingertips so we can direct them to why we're having to do this and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, I think those three mechanisms should reach a number of people to help answer any questions. I think a, a, an article in the paper won't hurt. Okay. And it's, to me, it's, we're doing something positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moving, and, and there are people who complain about the how some of the ponds look. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and who, who who's responsible? Of course, then you'll start getting calls on, okay, when are you going to fix when my you pond? Mind. Yeah. Um, for the people that didn't get notified, mm -hmm. can we, could we possibly in the future identify apartment dwellings that are, you know, maybe that can see yeah. the pond and just do a generic like current resident or does that work or I mean we're relying on the, the, yeah, property, the property owner to, to forward the message on yeah. and that's what happened. The, the property owner didn't forward the message on to the tenants and this is a, well I shouldn't say a unique situation but it's a, you have the kind of the, was it the Prairie Point um, business spaces, which, you know, was part of that. Then you also have kind of the seed in your living center, which has, I don't know, 200 units there. 
So, I mean, it gets fairly expensive to mail out right. 350 letters. Well, we should <laughs> perhaps include a sentence in there asking the property owners, if you have tenants, tenants, would you please? Post or, or, or post and I can even run out to the, so those places and, and post on an information yeah, board. Like I'm sure the larger they one probably has a property right. manager. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, you know, I, we're not we're not doing this because we don't we don't like trees or anything like that. We're we're doing this because we're permit. I called the DNR. I said, what if we don't do anything? You know, what happens if say we don't start cleaning up our ponds? And he said, well, you would be in non-compliance of your permit. You'd be subject to fines, and an annual audit would happen of your stormwater management plan. I'm like, all right, I, uh, now I know. Mm -hmm. You know, so when people call, I can say, you know, it's if we don't if we don't do anything, we're going to be fined. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it's, it's new, it's something that hasn't been done in this community forever. And so just that kind of that initial shock. And we're gonna, like I, I sent an email out to a couple of people um, just kind of reiterating, you know, we're going to be planting, you know, prairie grasses, we're gonna make a natural walking trail, we're gonna put up some stormwater uh, management, informational signage, a path is gonna be around the whole thing. So we're gonna try and make it look nice. It's just that initial shock of, you know, oh my gosh, what are they? They're clearing out the Absolutely. whole hillside. It's, it's it's rather shocking, but you know, I'm kind of have my hands tied right now. <laughs> I don't want to be in front of council answering why we're getting fined fifty thousand dollars from the DNR, <laughs> you know, every year. So, um, if you have any other suggestions, I mean, that's that's what I'll do. I'll keep sending out letters to adjacent property owners. Mm -hmm. In those cases where there is tenants or apartment complexes, I'll post it. I'll run out to those places, post it on informational board maybe inform the owner to pass it along to their mm -hmm. tenants mm -hmm. um, and then put the flyer in with the letter as well kind of highlighting those sections why we're having to do that and I think hopefully that's excellent. okay yeah. I th I, and I how do we we does someone call Re Rebecca Marshall and say <laughs> we'd like to run us <laughs> here's a here's, yeah. here's something yeah. that's going on and it's it's a big change and yep. and uh, people are concerned and we'd like to here's a being put together a good story and you've got nice mm -hmm. nice handouts to yeah okay. literature to yeah I can do that fill a whole page with that yeah okay I just want to make you aware just in case people are asking you on the streets or as being part of the public works committee asking what's going on you have some information of why why we're why we're doing what we're doing so good Next one. Jim. Next one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Update from the urban forestry. So Sarah has kind of been privy to this one, and I just wanted to inform the Public Works Committee before we go ahead and follow through on any action. But have you seen have you seen this map by any chance? I saw it in the um, in the packet. Yeah. In the packet, yeah. Okay, so this is this is a Heritage Green subdivision over by Red Cedar Canyon, and as you can see, uh, all the red dots are ash trees, and so as part of our kind of our emerald ash borer management plan, uh, I proposed removing, you know, uh, every. Well, I proposed moving half of them this year and then half of them next year and then replanting, but bringing it to the Urban Forestry Board, they suggested removing a third of them this year, a third of them, a third of them, just to give people not, not have that shock factor again and try to work with the community. But our ultimate goal is to replace all these ash trees with, with new plantings. And we're gonna send out a letter um, to all the residents in that neighborhood informing them of, of why we're doing it. It was in your packet, um, kind of the method, the schedule, the timeline that we have. Um, and so, our, like I said, our goal is to um, remove and replace all these ash trees over the next three year span. So I just wanted to bring that to the Public Works Committee's attention um, before I send out that letter and start going ahead with the work. And, and this is, what's the less than 20 inches or equal to DBH? Is that the diameter? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Diameter at breast height. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So, you know, the, the, this is a newer development, so these trees are fairly small in stature. I mean, they're they're probably eight to ten inches, eight to twelve inches in diameter. Um, so for our crew to go in there, it's very easy to handle. Um, and then if we can get a tree back in there, you know, hopefully it doesn't. Right. I mean, 
transitions a neighborhood sort of. So. Right, exactly. So it's unfortunate that, you know, the developer planted what ninety ash trees in just this small area. Um, you know, and that's why now we're stressing tree diversity and mm -hmm. and all that, you know, so that we don't run into these situations in the future. So um yeah, I just wanted to make Public Works Committee aware of this as well because it'll be a, a big project in kind of that part of the yeah. town. Yeah. And did we put something in place that protects us from this happening again in the future? We will be. Yep. Yeah. So as part of our when we approve a development, yep. we shouldn't yep. allow this. Right. So as part of our uh, urban forestry grant, we're rewriting the ordinance, mm -hmm. the tree ordinance, as well as developing a urban forestry st strategic plan for the whole city, oh. which we can incorporate uh, detail plates on proper planting techniques. So when developers come in and plant trees, they're actually following our spec. And anything that doesn't follow our spec, we can reject and have them replace. Um, we can also incorporate some of the developers, um, not a dev an agreement, not an agreement, but more of a, a policy to follow for developers so that, like Sarah suggested, so that we don't run into this into the future. We have, you know, policies and procedures in place that they have to have a select so many different species. You can't have, you know, back to back speed, you know, mm -hmm. so on and so forth, mm -hmm. where we can create that language so that when developments do come in, that we have some something to fall back on and, and show them. So. Yep, that's great. That's great. Oh. One question: We're removing <coughs> the, the overall plan. Remove 89 trees, or, or we aren't necessarily going to replace every tree, are we? No. It's, it'll be at a, at a new specification. Yep. New, new plan. So we're going to replace in those areas that that warrant a tree to replace, be replaced. A lot of these trees, some of these trees are really close to driveway aprons, or they're close to um, vision in the vision triangle or next to some stormwater catch basin facilities where we don't want trees um, So we're not going to replace tree for tree But we're going to try and get as as many as we can back in there keeping into call, you know Utility lines irrigation systems so on and so forth So we don't want to leave it desolate either, but we we do want to take into consideration some of those other factors when we're replanting Yes, I think uh, those developments have irrigation systems for the most part in that that area, they do or don't. They do. Yeah, I think they do too. I, so I know when I drove out there, the road. Yeah, they do for sure. Yeah, I, I remember. I've seen them. I, I've walked through them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, the other thing, what are we? I thought I read earlier, and maybe I just read it into the, the, what we're replacing it with in terms of diameter. It's not going to be. A, we're not going to be planning eight. 10 inch trees no so it'll be more in your you know two inch two inch range you know kind of your common um, nursery stock um, so unfortunately yeah we can't to plant an eight inch tree in some of those boulevards is you can't do it <laughs> you need to plant a smaller tree in some of those boulevards so yeah. and the cost sure and, the, and the cost there and blast a big tree and yeah. got a little tree you're gonna be upset it would be sad Absolutely. Sure. oh I would be too absolutely so we have to be prepared for that yeah but just the cost I mean you can uh, a cost of a even a four inch diameter tree is is three times as much as a, as a two inch caliper you know right. so there's a cost absolutely. factor as well and technically the the trees in the boulevards are the city's trees so I mean it's our investment that we got to look after just a question if a person wanted a larger tree would they could they cough up the difference sure absolutely I can Great. I can even put that in the letter if you want to replace with a larger size diameter, you know we can certainly they can certainly purchase or make up the difference. So, yeah. And when so. Uh, are you planning on this letter going? Well, uh, I we kind of discussed this before the snow season started, so <laughs> I was going to plan on doing it. You know, we so typically you got to start if you're going to do any ash tree removals you got to do it before April 1st because from April 1st to uh, is it middle of July or or August you're not supposed to touch any of the ash trees just because you encourage the emerald ash borer to move um, hmm. so before they start becoming active is kind of that April 1st deadline so it would be before that so I would probably I would make some of the changes and I would probably send it out here 
No. Pretty soon. Pretty soon. Either this week or so next we'll week. So we'll be rem removing trees, and then there'll be a time yep. period where there will be no tree, and then yep. later on a planting. Yep. Do we have a uh, indi you know you have an idea of when that planting might occur, or is it just going to be as we can do it? No, I would I would do the plantings in the fall, early okay. fall, just because so. your success rate, your mortality rate is a lot higher with your young stock. I guess so we you know, can't we you we know just we just need to be prepared to answer for the the questions yep. you know yep because and I can even put that in the letter kind of a time some people line. might say well I thought you know it was a isolated incident of an ash borer so why'd you have to do it before April yeah you know and I, I mean just thinking about what people how people might react yeah well why didn't you cut it down right when you were gonna put a new one in right yep that makes sense so okay I'll address, I can address that in the letter, kind of just say the reasoning why we're having to do it now. Um, you know, and then we can go out and we can grind the stump in the summertime when we have time. And then, like I said, I'd, I'd like to push the plantings. I like to do a majority of the tree plantings in the early fall to mid fall, just because they, the success is a lot better. You don't have to go through that summer mm -hmm. scorch and having the water easier on the staff, so on and so mm -hmm. forth. So. You may also want to tell them about the fall. Oh, yep, you did, planting on curb. Early midfall. Great. Yep. Okay. That's all I got for that one. It sounds like a solid plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the one third idea. So. Yeah. Originally, like I said, it was half, and then we kind of discussed it at Urban Forestry Board, and just to kind of lessen the the, the burden, the shock with every right. third. So. Yeah. Excellent. Next item, just uh, project updates from Public Works. Um, so we started to, we got the Vine Street. I'm going to be meeting with Bolton and Mank uh, next week to discuss uh, our storm, storm sewer repair projects for the 2019 season, um, to discuss um, our road maintenance projects coming up for the 2019 season. I'm recommending that we look at doing some chip sealing in some of our developments um, before they get too old and the chip seal doesn't, isn't effective. So. Um, whether that's Heritage Greens, Red Cedar Canyon, um, Hudson Meadows, and then there's a development to the north of Red Canyon across Stage Line. I don't know what that develops. Uh, Coach Light State, um, Lighthouse. Lighthouse development. So picking maybe one of those four over the next four years and hitting each one of those, um, depending upon what kind of pricing. Some of those developments are pretty big and it would eat up mm -hmm. our, our maintenance budget pretty quickly. So that's what I'm recommending for that. We also have um, you know, our crack filling and flex patching project that didn't occur this past year, that'll also be occurring in 2019. So we have to keep that in mind. We're going to add a couple of roads on there as well. Uh, First Street, Knollwood, uh, possibly Cooley Road, depending upon some of the pricing that we get back. So uh, getting those getting those together, um, meeting with Bolton and Mank to draft some of the specs and bid documents, and then um, doing a sidewalk replacement plan as well. So. Um, per kind of our discussion earlier, uh, there's some documentation that the Public Works Department has on some of the inventory work that's been done to date. Um, and we're going to try and address some of those areas where we need to make connections, uh, we need to replace some bad curb and sidewalks. People have been calling in throughout my time here and I've been making a list of those areas where they want, where the curb is bad or the sidewalk is bad and so on and so forth. So we'll be putting together a sidewalk replacement plan that will go out for bid here in the next month as well. Um, and then of course the snow. So, um, you know, for those people out there listening, drive safe. We're, it'll be a long couple of days with a couple of rounds. So our crews will be out pretty much, you know, 24 hours for the next couple of days, um, mining the salt use, you know, um, I know people were, were upset that we didn't get to every street, um, but keep in mind that there's only so much resources to go around and we try to hit those high priority areas and intersections and hills and um, so be, be careful. Yeah. Do we have a, uh, a storm uh, alert? Yes, we do have a, a, yep, we do have a winter snow, event. Winter, snow, snow event emergency, issue. thank you. It goes into effect at 9 o'clock tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Good. Um, well, you said something that rang a bell, but maybe. <laughs> oh, Hagen Street uh, sidewalk or bike path yep. pathway. Yep. So we're going to be incorporating that in with the Vine Street reconstruction um, to try and get some better pricing. Oh. 
So you have a contractor come in here and do both of them instead of having a contractor just come in for Hagen Street, you're probably going to get a lot more expensive pricing on that where yeah. you can kind of incorporate yeah, it. Yeah, that was pricey. Yep. So Good. we are going to be moving forward on replacing that, that trail this summer. Excellent. Yep. Items for future agendas? Can we discuss the next meeting date? That would be the next yeah. topic, yeah. Um, I'm thinking in the fall we can kind of stretch it out because there's usually less going on. But in, right now there's so much going on. Do we need to try to get back on our regular schedule, which would be the 26th? Is that... Uh, Now that I've said that, does that work? Yeah. That's fine with me. Mm -hmm. 26th of February? Yeah. Okay. And if we don't have any agenda items, we can always cancel. And so every, was it the, the fourth Tuesday of every month? Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. At 5 or 5.30? 5 or 5.30. I think I, my memory, which might not serve me well at all times, <laughs> said that you found it easy to get here by 5.30. Wasn't five, that? Uh, five is fine. Oh. Yeah, I would just assume, I thought it was five today, so I'm good with five. Oh. Okay. If we can, then when we're old, okay. home five earlier, five o'clock. Okay. What's the date on that, Jim? Sorry. The 26th of February. And then we'll go March 26th. p.m. got it All right. nothing else before us I look for a motion to adjourn so moved Second. all in favor Aye. 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 those opposed can shovel the sidewalk <laughs> did you want this no, that's